Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of NRL Supercoach Off The Bench. Uh, proudly brought to you by our sponsors, Bluebet. Um, round four is done and dusted, boys. And to um, help on me go through round four and discuss trade trends and the team list, we've got Timmy. Welcome, Timmy. Evening, gentlemen. It's a fun-filled week. Another green arrow for me. It was a nice big one. So, um, yeah, I've, I've, uh, I haven't had a red yet, touch wood. Um, but it's pretty easy to get green arrows when you start back in 90 odd K, but yeah, I'm, I'm up into the top 5% now up into 7,000 neat, actually seven triple zero. So, um, and I'm, I'm gradually getting closer to the, the top guys all the time. So yeah, it's good. It's bloody tight up there though. Jeez. I, um, oh yeah, you're not wrong. I, I was having a look at it earlier between Brad and I, right. There's a hundred points separate us in total points and the ranking difference is 21,000. In rankings yeah, look, for 100 points. That's just crazy. Last week, there was 15 points between Guy and I, and it was over 1,500 spots, yeah. 15 points. So it's crazy. It, it was 100 people, 100 places per point. Yeah. Which is nuts. Things can happen quickly, can't they? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, welcome and welcome to our special guest, Sam. He's been on, obviously on with us before with the BBL podcast. Um, He's a uh, mad, mad Bronco supporter like Timmy is as well. So welcome, Sam. How are you going? Very good, guys. Thanks for having me again. It's good to be back, and um, yeah, good to have a couple of couple of Bronco supporters out of the three of us. You're you're outweighed a little bit there, but uh, but yeah, no, happy to talk footy every every time I can. I feel happy, while the though, Tigers feel while happy, the Tigers mate. keep winning, again, right? you don't take a smile winning. off his face. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you I what, well. I'm going well. You'd be a happy man, that's for I sure. I tell you what, I was ready to throw something at that TV for Gutho to kick that goal. I can tell you now. <laughs> oh, gosh. Mm. Anyway, Sam, how are you going this year? I know you're doing okay. And um, how did you go on the weekend? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, you know, you always feel like there's some missed opportunities. Look, I, I'm really happy with a few of the decisions I made. I've taken a few risks and um, they paid off and I've been stoked with that. But then uh, I've managed to balance it out with some um, poor decisions as well, where I've either tried to play too safe and, and it hasn't hasn't worked out for me. So you rue those missed opportunities. Um, but yeah, I got um, just kicked over the 1,000 again, 1,069 on the weekend. So not too bad. Can't complain. I'm just over 10,000th in my season rank. So you know, it could be worse. Um, and hopefully I'm in a decent spot with some players who can generate some cash and get me up the rankings as the season goes on. That's good. Very good. Do you know start. do you know what your points are overall, Sam? Do you know how many points you've actually got? Just interested to know the difference between me and you. I can't imagine this much. Four thousand and forty eight. Four oh four eight. Well, there you go. So I'm four oh nine oh. So we're what's that? Forty two points. Forty two points and you're three thousand spots behind me. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't take it's much. Roll, isn't it? Well, it's all right for you guys. You know, you guys are doing fantastic. And meanwhile, here's me uh, with a thousand and eighty-seven, fantastic captain turbo, like most others did. But um, obviously, Hammer repaid the faith on me too, and a couple others, which were good. Um, back it was back in seventy-two k, so I saw some nice green arrows up to about forty-eight k, but a long way to go. Can't pick a captain to save my life at the moment. I don't think well, I've had a captain score over 60 at the moment, but I'm heading in the right direction and I'm I'm happy with my team. So I'm slowly getting to where I need it to be at. So, Timmy, back to you. Good, bad and ugly for this week, for you. Mate, my, uh, my good was definitely captaining the hammer. Um, it's two, I think, two good captains in a row. I went Nico for the first two rounds and that failed miserably. Um, I can't remember who it was that I had last week, but they turned up. Oh, Teddy, Teddy last week and Hammer this week. So, yeah, look, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. He's definitely my good. Um, my bad. Oh, geez, I don't know. Um, I had it on my screen and now it's just dropped dropped out. Um, give me two seconds. There we go. Um, no, nah, it's gone. My bad. Oh. Yeah, no, lost it. I don't know. I'll come back. Okay, we'll go. We'll go, we'll go to Sam. We'll go. We'll I don't know what's going on. Over. We'll pass the ball over to Sam then. Yeah, no. Uh, the good was I brought in Hammer, yeah. brought him in this round, and uh, and he and I captained him as well, which was nice. I think a, a bit of a risk, being I think he's only scored one or two hundreds ever in Supercoach in the past, so that was nice to see him do well. He had to do a lot to score a hundred. He had to get a few try assists and and a try, so it took a bit, but he got there and. 
double that was was very handy. Um, the bad, I guess I was let down by a few of the center wing options, Taylor May, Ben Trevojevic, Jamin Salmon, who I've stuck with, um, mm. who all had pretty pretty poor scores again. Um, but and and even probably uglier than that was. I uh, decided to use another boost and um, the boost because just because I felt like I had too many injuries, I needed an extra scoring player and I got rid of Brennan Piakura was, and I traded him straight to Finu from uh, the Tigers. I thought to generate some cash. He'll, he's been going well. I like him as a player, but at the last second, I'm like, I just can't trust the guy who's starting on the bench. He's, he's due for a low score. I need the, like I've got other players who can generate cash. I'll, I'll pick someone who I've wanted to pick this whole time. I think he's due to score points. And I brought in both of them. So it was a bit embarrassing, but he got uh, 39. Like, I feel like his base stats aren't too bad, but he's, uh, he just hasn't got any attacking stats, has he? I mean, I look back at 2022 and Bo scored plenty of points. But I don't know he had to score a few tries and a few try assists and line breaks to get those points that year um, and he's in a probably much worse Gold Coast Titans team this season but uh, yeah I just feel like he's a guy who can who can get those tackle busts and he just hasn't been doing it I started him as well thinking the same thing especially with Fafita out and then when I think uh, was it a foreign didn't play that one game and he just didn't get any ball at all and I just bit the bullet last week and I said, see you later, Firma. So you've traded him in and I've traded him out. <laughs> and I've, yeah. I've gone Firma and I've bought in, I think it was, I think I might have gone to Valve or something like that. So I had had plenty of cash in the bank. So I'm happy with that trade. As much as Val didn't go as high as I think he will, but I think he's going to repay us this week against the Titans. Yeah, um, I would say to you, Ross, I'd say with, uh, stick to your process. I know you haven't picked, picked those uh, good captains, but uh, you came into with a with a plan with an approach you thought would work and from cricket i know my in the past if i go into a season with a, an approach to my game that i think is going to work i have a couple of bad weeks and have a few low scores if i change change that approach change the process that's when you you keep you stay in the rut so stick to your process you you're doing it for a reason so you, i'm sure you'll pick a few good captains in the weeks to come I think you're right because the year that I did really well in 2021, I think it was when I got 150 first, like I just went with my gut on and every, everything. I I had people give me their opinions and I just completely ignored them and just went with trusted my gut, which I wish I'd have done this year. As I said to you earlier, when I didn't, when I went Molotalo over Holmes two weeks ago, that hurt big time because Holmes went up, got pulled out of 150 and I was going to captain him that week too and decided to go Molotalo instead. So that really hurt, but my good was bringing in Hammer like you guys. I didn't captain him, unfortunately, but I'm still happy with his 112 and Ponga for his 117 too. I'm going to have the baddest turbo. Far out, man. When he did that flick pass five minutes into that game, I'm like, he's on. He's in for a big score. I've got him as captain and I was happy. And then it was just error after error after error after that. And then my ugly has to be... Joey Lust, jo- jo- is it Joey Lusick? Far out, man. Mm. 80 minutes for 29 points. Now, I'm not expecting miracles out of this bloke, but if you're a hooker and you're playing 80 minutes, you should be making around 40 tackles a game. So realistically, you should be at least getting a minimum 40 points. And then so on, on the weekend, he actually only played 59 minutes. Oh, day. did he now? Oh, well, there you go. He did play yeah, hands came on, didn't he? the last couple, but um, but yeah, he, he uh, hands hands is back off the bench and out of the eight uh, out of the yeah, seven. Yeah, thank goodness. So he should be back to eighty. So how many minutes, minutes did hands? So hands end up playing like twenty minutes or so. Then did he? Yeah, I assume so. I, I haven't looked at that. Yeah. Though, right? Okay. That's what. Yeah. Um. Look, there's a yeah. Look, it's just yeah. Look, I I I've got to say the good two was Galvin boys as well for the I'm I think we're all on him, aren't we? He's been. A shining light for the Tigers, and they're definitely going to miss him this week. That's for sure. Hmm. Yeah, very impressive. He, he keeps on putting out some good scores to start his career. So they'll, they'll, yeah, they. So I'll wait and see how Jaden Sullivan goes filling his spot. Yep. As as far as super catch goes, too, the fact that he scored sixty six points while still spending ten in the bin. So uh, he obviously loses ten points or fifteen points, whatever it is, for his sin bin, and yeah. and then the points that he could have made while he was actually on the field instead of being sitting in the grandstand. So he's he's probably looking at somewhere near about an eighty point point score, um, and then take, and and that's just if he if he was continuing on the way that he was. So that's without attacking stats or anything else. Um, I've got all mine sorted now. I don't know what was going on with the internet, but uh, look, my bad. You can throw a blanket over. 
Um, I had a lot of underperforming guys. Uh, Lasik was one. Uh, May, like you said, Burbo, 36. But, I mean, there's not much else you can sort of get from him. Look, my ugly, to be honest, I traded in Dom Young as well as the hammer. Um, and Dom Young obviously just didn't work out. He he looked good in parts, but just obviously wasn't getting the ball enough. He, he only scored 30 points, and I was really expecting a lot more than that. So he had a really low BE, so he makes money. Um, his BE for this week, if I have a really quick squiz, he's on a 20 BE for this week, so he's, he's going to make more money. He should finish somewhere yep. 700 plus by the end of the round. So Good match up against the dogs too. I like it. Yeah, look, I, I think he'll he'll do what I wanted him to do. Um, was just a little bit disappointed this round, but them's the breaks. You can't win them all. I bought him in as well, and I wasn't expecting a miracle out of him. I thought maybe a fifty. I'll be happy with that because Panthers have always been a good defensive team. Yeah, that, no matter what. So I would have been, I would have been happy with that. But I, I should say my good too was I actually trade Tyrone May out to um, Hammer last week, which was one of my really good trades. I'm so uh, so stoked I got rid of him. I was a bit concerned when. Cleary was ruled out, obviously, and a lot of ball would go to left, but it didn't. So, yeah. That's a big that call. Ta- Taylor May. You'd... Taylor May, sorry. Yeah, not Tyrell May, Taylor. Yeah. Or, or Tyrone May. No, Taylor oh. May, sorry. Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> yeah, good job. I'm definitely not trading Tyrell May out. I can tell you that now. <laughs> no, no, that's it. That's I it. don't know if I can try to try it out. Um, Taylor May is, is. I know he had a poor score on the weekend, but he's shown. I don't know. He's shown he's got good potential. I, I feel like he'll be in my team for a bit longer for for right or wrong. Um, it's funny how it works out. Like I, I was worried. You were mentioning Trevoy, uh, Turbo Tommy. That is that he. You know, was started off so well, and I was worried that I didn't have him in my classic team. And I was a lot of people I was playing against did, and then they were going to beat me because he was going to score all these points after the start he had. But I also had him in a draft league of mine so I was wanting him to do well for that so it's funny it, you know I sort of wasn't sure whether to hope that he did well or not um and that's the same with a few players because of how the uh the draft system works which is adds an extra intricacy to it all it's and, also and that's a big it's reason. also the, it's also when you're cheering on players that you've got in super coach against your own team as well yeah. <laughs> you don't know where to go with the heart mate is it in the middle where is it <laughs> yeah 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 all right. right. Yep. Yeah, let's whip into these game into the team list. So first game is the Storm versus the Broncos. Uh, for the Storm, they get Munster in, um, gets his back for the first game of the season with Jerome Hughes back from suspension. Torin Wishart drops to the bench and Jonah Pezza drops out. Sean Ball will start on the edge. Still no Joe Chin, which is frustrating for owners. Christian Moss replaces Kane Bradley on the bench and for the Broncos. Brent, big bad Brendan Tiakura replaces A.B. Wilson on the bench, who I believe hurt, got hurt at training, so he's been ruled out. Um, you guys are the Broncos fans. This bloke is a unit and a half. Yeah, it'll be good to see how he goes. I, I haven't seen a whole lot of him. Um, but, yeah, Wilson's not even on the in the reserves list, so he's, he must be injured um, for some reason. He, he must have hurt himself. Uh, they uh, And they've gone... Have they gone with yeah Tristan Saylor still at fullback? So um, it's good to have him to show his ability again. It'll be interesting to see what they do when Reese Walsh comes back. But yeah, is is Joe Chan definitely injured still? Is that is he just it hasn't been dropped? Has he? I don't think he's been dropped. Um, I know he was injured a couple of weeks ago, and I think they were expecting him to be back this game. But obviously, he's still injured because he hasn't been even named in reserves or anything. So my guess he's still out injured. But I'll have to check the NRL. Um, page and see what it says uh, i'd have to be have to be yeah the um the the omission of x is an interesting one uh i didn't see if there was an injury after last week's game but like he's been playing really well really solid i'm a big fan of his and also ben takura uh he must be brendan takura's brother thanks ross uh but ben, ben takura uh look the, the guy's a, a man mountain he's um He's a bit like Payne Haas. He's a massive big unit and he's just going to steamroll, guys. I, I can see the front row future or um, certainly the the way forward for the Broncos is those two boys are eventually going to find their way into that team um, if the Broncos can keep both of them. Surely they are going to start to get a little bit tired of not getting not making the team sheet each week. So, yeah, I, I think they're, they're the way forward for us and um, they're both big units and both make a lot of tackle breaks and and run the ball straight and hard and and certainly get in and do the, the tackle work as well. So, yeah, look, I, I like uh, I like big Xavier Willison and also Ben Takura. So, 
hopefully there's a few good things to come from those guys. Yep. So Hugh says Xavier Wilson was injured at training, so he's just been ruled out for the hopefully should only be a week apparently. Okay. That makes sense then. Yep. So Bulldogs versus the Roosters, the next one uh, for the Dogs. Oh, well, those who have got Sam Hughes like me, who's been frustrated getting his 12s and 13s, he's actually starting this week. Liam Knight goes back to the bench. Josh Curran starts on the edge with Jacob Preston out injured. Blake Wilson starts on the wing with Jack Addo, Jay Addo Carr. Jack Addo Carr, okay, I'll get it right in a minute. He's out um, concussion. Kurt Moran's out suspended. Harrison Edwards and Katoni Katafua come onto the bench. Um, yeah, no, it's great to see Hughes starting. I've had him too since the, since the start of the, the season. I And I, I missed out on Henry. I, I had Henry and Hughes as my two bench front rowers before the season started. And then I saw Farmer Suley with that green uh, tick in the starting in the starting 13. And I thought, how can I not have a starting 13 front rower in my team? So uh, Sucked so, into that one. I don't, I've got him as well. It's all right. Uh, it's okay. You're not the only one, Sam. Oh, I got rid of him. I got rid of him a couple of weeks ago, thankfully. But uh, oh. but he was there to start with, so that was a trade going for me. No, nah, I've got I've got uh, May up there, and I've also got Hughes. I've got Henry, and I've got Pharmaceutical as well. So it's <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name properly. Seriously, I'm not doing it. I'm looking all right because I've got May, Henry, Cotter, and Hughes. So um, it it I was contemplating on looking at dumping Hughes, but it's a hard one because. Well, they're not making cash. You're not going to get anything out of them if you sell them. So it's um it's it's kind of a wasted trade. So yeah, hopefully he he does get the minutes. If he gets forty plus, surely he's got to be close to a point per minute. Um, yeah, if he can earn somewhere between forty and fifty points to at least generate some cash for next week, that'll be great. If he can keep his spot starting, that'll be even better. Well, I've got to say he's definitely a better he's definitely a better player than Liam Knight. And what's doing oh, yeah. with that hair? Well, I don't know what's doing with that here either, mate. Seriously. It's not a punishment. Has to be. I, I blame his new girlfriend. <laughs> he must have lost a bet or something, I think. But uh, Harrison Edwards on the bench too. We, we saw glimpses of him in the past. Mm. looked like a decent player and he hasn't been able to find his way into the Bulldogs 17 until this mm. week. So if he gets some minutes, he might he might score a few points and maybe impress and keep himself in the 17. We'll wait and see. Have, you boys, reason- got, yeah. have you boys got Josh Curran? No. 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 Neither? No, it's a it's a tough one because um I kind of felt last week like I'd missed the boat and just not really sure. It, obviously, in the past he's been an absolute gun and and can pick up the attacking stats. He seems to be getting the minutes, but in and out like he's not. I don't think he's playing eighty each week though. Is he? Nah. He's sitting somewhere around about fifty five to sixty minutes or something. So yeah, it's a it's a tough one. I can't imagine even with him starting this week. I don't think he'll play 80. I think he'll still play around 60. I think Harrison Edwards will probably take some minutes off him potentially on an edge, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do like I do like Curran as a buy this week, um, especially with the fact that he's going to get you all next week too. So, well, we, we think he's going to get you all, but who knows what the boys there are going to do with NRL Supercoach. If Sangster's got him, mate, he is getting dual next week. But I, I've gone for other options, which we'll talk about later. I've got a better option. But, yeah, anyway, to the Roosters, Angus Crichton comes into the starting side. So, Stilly Tupanua going back to the bench. So, if you got him like me, he's a sell now. He's gone. Lindsay Collin comes back from injury. So, Terrell May goes back to the bench with Egan Butcher dropping out. Um, I think, obviously, you can't jump on him yet, but I think, boys, I think Angus Crichton will be one to watch for sure if he can hold mm-hmm. down that spot. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I've got Tupanua, so that, that hurts a bit. I, um, if he gets 80 minutes, I think he's worth it at, at the price he's at. But, yeah, now he's on the bench. It makes it hard. You know, there, there could be a late switch. You never know. They might switch him back onto the field at the last minute. That's what I'm hoping for, but but it probably won't happen, will it? Another one that will, another one that's a watch there for the Roosters too is Nat Butcher's uh, plugging along nicely, scoring well. But we'd like him a bit cheaper because he's about seven hundred k at the moment, I think. Yeah. All right. Next game is the Knights versus the Dragons. So for the Knights, Dan, G- Dan Gagai comes back from injury. So Dylan Lucas drops out. Jackson Hastings replaces Tyson Campbell in the halves. Jaden Braley is back to the starting side. Uh, Crossland back to the bench. Leo Thompson returns from suspension on the bench. And for the Dragons, just one change for them. Michael Milo replaces Hamill Sale on the bench. Um, I think the only one we need to talk about here maybe is Jaden Braley. At 330K, if he can hold that starting spot and get decent minutes, he could be a decent option to go from Lusik to. 
yeah, it could be an option for for some people. That's for sure. I don't think I don't think I'll be bringing him in, but I can see where the temptation would be. No, the the dragons the dragons have have shown plenty of potential this year. I, you know, Kyle, Kyle Flanagan has been a, a decent um, super coach option uh, for his price at five eight for people who have needed him there. But you know, Galvin's probably the easy trade out has been the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, no. I, you know, yeah, the Knights have chopped and changed that the half combination the last couple of weeks now. So, you know, Jackson Hastings obviously didn't didn't complain too much and get on too many people's bad side. He's back in the team. Timmy, what's your thoughts? Anything you like? Anything out of here? Well, obviously, Lomax um, news came out today that he's been released from his contract. He'll finish out the year unless they can. Do a, um, come up to sort of some sort of agreement for a player swap, but it's looking like most likely heads to the Sombreros, from what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nothing surprises me anymore with those guys. Um, yeah, look, there's not a lot. Look, I I do like uh, I do like Lomax. I nearly brought him in a couple of rounds ago. Um, with the Knights, obviously KP, KPP is one that I'm looking at. Um, I've sort of obviously missed his first price rise, but it's certainly one. He knocked out a 65, I think, yeah. on the weekend. He was about 50 after lockout and then uh, then went into uh, getting the extra points after. So, yeah, look, I, um, I'm pretty keen on him. I think he's still cheap and he's he's still value, uh, especially if you've got someone like I do, um, uh, yeah. as in the, the Brisbane second row, trying to dump him out. And yeah, I've got cheaper guys like Salmon. Like, he can yeah. generate some cash pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, look, outside of that... Yeah, Ponga, obviously. Um, if you don't have him, he's an option. It's I was initially playing the fullback roulette, um, just with buys and things like that. I, I don't know. It's we're going into round five now. So how far do you keep going until you get to origin and then start playing games? Like there's another five rounds, I guess, on until magic round and then origin isn't too far behind that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm bringing in KPP this week for Tupanua. So that's my that's one of my trades. So, what's he sitting at now? About four twenty, four forty. Yeah, four forty. So it's, it's pretty much nearly a straight swap. Mm. And I'll get some money out of KPP too, and he looks good too. He's got that um, Sunny Bill mold of him as well, and I think those attacking stats are going to come. They're definitely going to be there at some stage. So, and I think he's only going to get better too. Yeah. From from you, you watch his game each week. He's just he's got a little bit more used to it. So, because he's a pom, isn't he? He's, he's come yeah, over he's from England, here, so yeah. he's obviously had to climatize. It's uh, now it's getting a little bit cooler. Hopefully, he'll go up a gear, and if he gets the minutes, he's an absolute beast. Yeah. Next game, South versus the Warriors for South. So Alex Johnson's out for six weeks with a hamstring injury. Isaac Thompson comes in to start on the wing. Um, I'm sure those who had Jacob Gagai were holding hope that he was going to come in, but not to be. Um, Shaq Mitchell's out with concussion, so Sean Kepi comes onto the bench. For the Warriors, seeing Kale play his first game for the year at fullback, RTS shifts back to the centres. Pompey drops out. Uh, Luke Carf, Metcalf's obviously out, uh, for, I think, for three months with a broken leg, replaced by um, T. Marie Martin, which I think a lot of people thought was going to be Harris DeVita, but not to be. Uh, Kurt Capel's out with concussion. Marata Niakura starts, and a Tom Ayl and Freddie Lussick join the bench. Much to talk about here, boys. There's a couple of ones that interest me, but I'm well, obviously AFB's one, and obviously Cam Murray's another one for me. Yeah, I've got I've got Fanil Blake. I uh, brought him in when Haas was ruled out, and he went well. But he just relies on those attacking stats a little bit, doesn't he? He had a he had a pretty quiet weekend. But he, he scores plenty of tries for a front rower, so I, I need him to keep grinding out those attacking stats for me. And I've guy that I've started with who hasn't lived up quite to expectations is Tavita Totola from the Rabbitohs. He, he's he been getting that 15 minutes a game, which I was sort of hoping for at the start of the season. But again, no, no attacking stats really. Mm-hmm. Updates were very interesting for him on the weekend. I think he was about 42 points and he down, down-dated to... 35 and updated back again to 49 or something. So um, he was all over the place, but yeah, I don't know. That the two front rollers are who I'm, who I'll be watching carefully and deciding what I do with them. I didn't see the game on the weekend, but I, I saw, I think, I think I saw that AFB only played like 44 minutes. So I presume that was just a double winning and they just probably give him reduced minutes. You know, he's, he's been doing a lot of work this year. So. Yeah. 
Anything to add on this game, Tim? No, it's um, I, I'm a big fan of AFB. I was really a bit frustrated I didn't go there at the start, but I went with a cheaper option with um, uh, with Cotter and um, and Max King. Max King didn't seem to work out, but he's played much better since I sold him a couple of weeks ago, which is frustrating. But that's super coach for you. Um, yeah, look, it's um. I'm, I'm obviously all over RTS. I was really keen and hoping he was going to stay at fullback, but they've got they've got plenty of extra players there. Like you said, Tamari Martin, um, he's no slouch, and and he's certainly an attacking weapon for them. So obviously they wanted to get him on the field somewhere, and that's obviously the logical position for him. It's better that he goes to fullback rather than trying to squeeze him in the centre somewhere. So, look, I, I totally get it. Um, Rocco Berry was one that a lot of people were, were keen on a couple of weeks ago as a bit of a pod play. Um, start of the season, all guns blazing. And um, yeah, so so far, so good. I think last week, not quite up to the way that he had been playing the previous weeks, but just another one to keep an eye on. Um, that's about it, I guess, for that one. I think the only one we should speak about, and I know, Sam, you're keen on him, is um, SJ, because obviously a lot of people are going to be struggling for a halfback this week, especially if you've got that Cleary and Hines combo, as you do at the moment. Um, I know you're pretty keen on SJ as well. Yeah, there's been a bit of a halves roulette for, for a lot of people this year in Supercoach. Um, I started with Moses and and Hines um, and, you know, then brought in Cleary for Moses. And now I think this week I might bring in SJ. Um, you know, he's back to goal kicking. Will be that real dominant half with um, with Metcalf not there. And, uh, yeah, it looked like he shrugged off any injury or niggle that he was carrying. So he's, you know, 100K or more or something like that cheaper than when he started the season. And, um, you know, the Rabbitohs have had a poor start. Good chance against the, a good a good performing Warriors side that they uh, can put on a few points against them and, and Johnson can put it on a few try assists. All right, next game is Manly versus the Panthers. So for Manly, there's no changes there. For the Panthers, uh, Fisher-Harris returns from injury. Uh, Lindsay Smith drops back to the bench. Maverick Guy drops out. A um, couple I just want to mention here quickly. Obviously, that's a bit no good for the, our owners of Henry. He's been handy uh, last couple of weeks with a 50. I've actually been playing him as my front, one of my front rowers. He's plugged me out of 50 last two weeks coming off the bench, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the other one I wanted to speak about for Manly is um, Ola Kowalu, boys. He just, yeah. I know, I know I was very frustrated because I've got a couple of opponents who have got him in draft. And when I saw he was only on 50 points with like 10 minutes to go, I was super happy. And then he got that junk try at the end. He just seems to keep doing it week in, week out. It's um, He's an absolute attacking weapon. I watched him a couple of weeks ago. He, he got over the line twice. Uh, not last, not the weekend, but the previous one, got over the line twice and had both tries knocked back. And both of them looked like tries for all money. So, yeah, it's um, he's an interesting one. He just he has those attacking stats and he has the ability to score those extra points. And it's generally with with a line break in there as well. So he does, when he scores, he basically scores in 30s. So, yeah, look, at he's one that I'm really keen on. Um, I'm not sure this week if I've got the kahunas to run uh, Hutchinson in halfback. So I'm looking at either maybe SJ or um, uh, going to Hughes from the Storm. If I don't do that, then I think Ola Kuatu is the one that I'm going to bring in. I, my my team as a whole looks pretty good and I'm, I'm pretty happy. My second row is just not quite there and I'm just trying to work out how I do that. If I bring in Ola Kuatu, I think I can then um, bring in Fainu and KPP. If I go to Hughes, I think he's about an extra 30K or something. So I've got to have a look at the other two changes. I, I don't think I can afford it. Yeah, yeah the try Ola Kuatu scored on the weekend was just too easy. He just fell yeah. over the line. It looked, mm. like, it looked like lazy defense, but maybe he's just that that big and strong that it's hard, so hard to tackle. Um, I've I've got Tommy Talao in my uh, in my larger squad in, in Classic Supercoach. I, I was very happy on the weekend when he was a late inclusion into the 13 Tommy on the on the wing um after his first round 50 odd but uh then he managed very very few on the weekend 13 or 15 something like that so his break evens only only uh yeah in the it's in the positives anyway it's probably um 20 or something I think uh 13 his break even is so he won't make too much cash won't make as much as I was hoping for yeah well, none of, I don't think any of us are Luke Brooks owners, are we? No. 
what would you be doing with Luke Brooks if he didn't have any other major problems? Would you be looking to move him on, or would you just give him another week? I know he only got a twenty odd on the weekend, but what do but you he's think? Been, he's been pumping out fairly consistent. Well, he has been. Before, it's just, but it was just last week. I think he pulled. He only got a twenty six or something. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'm I, I personally, I've been really happy, and and was actually toying with trying to find a way to bring him in as a as a cheaper option, but. Yeah, look, I, I don't know. He's, he's looked fantastic on the field. He's certainly made Manly look like a much better football team. And I'd imagine, like yourself, there's plenty of Tigers fans that have been wondering where that Luke Brooks has been for the last, I don't know, 15 million years that he played there. I know where it's been. I'm not worry about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who do, you, who do you bring in for him? That's that's the thing. That 5A position is a tough one to to uh, to play around with. Dylan Brown, you know, he's a popular one, but has he been a little bit underwhelming maybe for his price? Um, and Munster coming back, but, you know, can you trust it with the injury he's been holding? Um, I've been obviously happy with the and playing him, but, you know, it's still hard to be confident that he's going to maintain it through the year and keep averaging it at a good tick. Um, so, you know, if you've got Galvin on the bench and Brooks on the field, it's, it's hard to make a change at this stage, I'd say. And hats off to you with that too, mate. I know we talked about it in the preseason and I just couldn't see it. He's He doesn't have, admittedly, he doesn't have the same ceiling that some of the other halves do, but he's banging out those consistent 80s and 90s. And like, yeah, if if that's what he's going to give you, then on average, he's, he's going to come out trumps in front of most of the other halves anyway. So look, he's, he's looked really good. He's scored plenty of tries already so far this season. And I think that's going to continue. Yeah, look, Dearden's in a he's in a good team and who's got a good run of uh, of matches to start the year, so uh, that's that's worked out well for him. But hopefully, he can continue it for my sake. Mm. No, you you did well there, mate. Next game is the Dolphins versus the Tigers. Uh, for the Dolphins, uh, Ray Stone comes back. He starts at lock. Max Plath is out suspended for two weeks. Uh, Kenny Bromwich comes onto the bench. For the Tigers, unfortunately, Lachlan Galvin's been suspended two weeks, taking the early plea for a hip drop. So Jaden Sullivan's been named to start. Uh, Leite Fanua, he comes onto the bench. He's a, another young gun, similar to um, Galvin in age. Um, I can't wait to watch him. Um, he should be good. And then Alex Twell replaces Asa Capella on the bench. Um, I don't know if there's too much to talk about. Actually, you know what there is, I think. Um, do you think it's too late to jump on Hammer Boys or not? To jump on the Hammer? Yeah, to jump on him this week. Would you still grab him, even though he just went up like 80K this week? I, I think so. I, the way that he's played so far, he's he's involved in a lot of their attack. Um, obviously, in this day and age, you can't beat sheer speed. And he's got she, he's got speed to burn. So, look, I... Um, I can see him getting more points. Uh, whether or not he tons up on a weekly basis, what's he hit three out of three, no, two tons out of three games? No, so last, not last week, but the week before, he got 96, I think it was. That was with three tries. But then on the weekend, he got one try, I think it was, and two tries. He's got 112. Hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I think in the week before, they weren't with line breaks. I think one was off a kick or something. So yeah, the three tries, one of them difference. was off a kick. Two of them were off a kick or something, yeah. Yeah, so that always makes a difference. Um, but there were, there was a couple of other instances during the game where it, it was an option where they could have passed to him and didn't. Um, I think there was, there's certainly attacking stats there for him to be had. So, yeah, look, it's um, I was at the start of the season, wasn't really convinced. I thought Jermaine Asako would be, mm. continue to be their main man. But, no, Hammers um, really warmed into that fullback role. And to be honest, when I looked at selling fullbacks a couple of weeks ago, had Dolphins not been on the buy, I probably would have moved him down to fullback. Yeah, I think he just got to keep. Uh, he's got to keep demanding the ball. He uh, needs to grow some confidence and and take it on because I think yeah, sometimes they just go short a lot to the to the men inside him. But um, I like another one in the, the Dolphins, Flegler. He's been amazingly. Yeah, he was the one I was going to mention too. So let's have yeah, go on, keep going. Yeah, like I wish I'd started with him. Yeah. I was convinced the whole way until uh, until we talked about how he had an early buy and um, that was hard to start with. So he's he's been super impressive. And we'll talk, like you can talk more about him. Another guy like that, Max Plath, that got suspended. I feel bad for him. It, was definitely, it definitely should have mm. been suspended. That was a poor tackle. But I think mm. he could be a guy in the future, probably not this year or whatever, but the coming years, he could easily be a you know an 80-minute or a high-minute lock position. And he works hard. He makes a lot of tackles. Makes a lot of runs. 
Um, I feel like he's he's got some potential moving forward in the years. Yeah, with Fleg going back to Fleg, he was impressive on the weekend. He punched out at 80. He had a line breaking assist and a try assist, but Nelly scored two, so he could have easily have thunned up. Mm-hmm. He looked really, really strong. Yeah. 530k, yeah, I th- 530k, I think is a really good option this week. Yeah, he's a he's an alternative now to, to Cotter or Ming. Um it's I just wasn't sold. I mean, obviously being the Bronx fan that I am, I, I know what he can produce. I think I was just too afraid of the one, the early draw was certainly one thing that, that maybe take a step back from him. But then just being able to curb that frustration that he gets, he, he does get like a suspension. Yeah. He, yeah. he does does like doing a few dumb things and, and maybe just being under Wayne. Wayne settled him down a little bit. So let's wait and see if he can go till origin without a suspension. I'll be very impressed and uh, hope he then takes that into the Queensland team. Yep. That's the other thing too. We obviously, you know, it would have been handy if he wasn't playing Origin. That's for sure because I think they play all the, all three buys too, the, the Dolphins. So that would have been a handy one for sure. Yep. Going back to Max Plath, look, I, I really agree, Sam. I think he's a great player. Everything that we've seen so far, I think even the when he came on the field late last season, I think the the glimpses that we saw, he did look look the deal. He's a decent, solid guy too. He's not like his dad. His dad is a sort of a bit of a I don't know. I wouldn't say bean pole, but he wasn't. I think Max looks a bit bigger than what Dad used to be. So, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. And I think if, uh, as far as Super Coach goes, obviously he's named he's named at five eight in Super Coach. He's been playing lock, so he'll obviously pick up dual position. Maybe that'll happen next week uh, when the after round six. Who knows? Because he's he started two games and that's where he's played. So um, or he's come off the bench and and that's where he's played. So. He's obviously definitely not in the 5-8 mould as far as that goes, so they've got that one wrong, and hopefully they give him the DPP and we go from there. Well, I know I watched the Supercoach podcast this this afternoon and they did say that he was definitely going to get it, but now that he's out suspended and he hasn't played a certain amount of games there, that they might have to wait until the next round of round 12. I I think it's just a logic. I think it's just a logic one, though. They've they've named him for Supercoach at 5-8 and he's nowhere near it. No. So, um, yeah. Yeah. All right, next game's another uh, Queensland Derby. It's the Cowboys versus the Titans. So the Cowboys, no changes, no need to. Um, Titans have made a couple. Jojo Fafida and Harley Shields come in uh, on the side, replacing Philip Sami, who's out injured. Calm Pereira, I'm not sure what happened to him. He hasn't been named. Um, Isaac okay. Liu's out with concussion. So Jamil Jolof starts a prop, and Aaron Clark will start lock, and Josa... Josiah Pahlu will debut off the bench. Yeah, no, right. I think Tom good match up this one, boys. Drops, yeah. Good match up. Yeah, uh, I really like this match up for your Deedon, um, Sam, and obviously for Holmes and obviously Drinky as well. Yeah, you got to think it's going to be a high scoring game for the Cowboys. So, yeah, Titans. I guess Hasler had to make a few changes there with the way they've been going. I'm. You know, Cam Pereira dropping him was an interesting call, but he he did make a couple of mistakes on the weekend, so probably a bit low on confidence. And those those young wingers have shown some potential, so you know, see how they go. Give them a crack. I think their their issues may be more in the halves, uh, but we'll wait and see. They might they might surprise us, but yeah, the the Cowboys just look far too strong. Um, they're all all round all round on the park. They've got they've got attack and they've got uh, consistency, so it's going to be hard to beat them. I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, Sam, that I don't. I just find that Alex Brim, um, Brimson's just wasted in the centres for me, and I don't think Tanner Boyd's a first grader at best. So I'd be having Brimson in the halves, um, for sure, alongside Kieran Foran. Um, I don't understand why they're not making this change, but I feel like Brimson's wasted in the centres. He's too good of a player. Yeah, yeah, and I think he's yeah, a better fullback as well. But um, mm. but yeah, you, you probably. It's hard to fit them all in with Campbell as well. So, yeah, I'd be having Brimson in the halves. I agree with you. It's hard, probably hard for Hazlitt to make that call now after they've done all preseason with him in the centres. Um, but they, they don't really have another half, do they? They, You know, they had the young young Weaver start mm. the year in the halves, but he's probably not quite up to it. He's not going to win premierships for them just yet. Maybe in the future, who knows? But they don't really have another option unless they go to Brimson in the halves. Yeah. I think I think it's interesting too because Tanner Boyd started out first grade as a hooker or a utility, so it's yeah I don't know like it's it's an interesting one if they could 
they seem to really be missing a hooker. Um, so I don't know whether that's part of the game plan, whether it, it is something that they could do. Look at moving AJ into back into the halves where he likes to play. Um, then obviously bring that, see how these young guys go out in the outside backs, whether or not they can uh, can hold a spot if move one of them into centre and, and leave them there and go the other way. So, yeah, look, it's, it's an interesting one. I can see this one being a cricket score. Um, I think the cows could put on anything here. Mm. It's um, This could be 50 to squat. You know, uh, Max, Max Bryant's brother is uh, on contract with the Titans, the cricketer, Max Bryant, his brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah who's that? Oscar Bryant, he's a, okay. he's a top thirty squad, but he's he's a he's a hooker, dummy half. So um, he's still young. He's very young, but he's played a couple of the trials. But yeah, Max is Max's brother. So uh, Max was Max Bryant was apparently a very good footballer, rugby league player back in the day too, and ended up going with cricket. But but yeah, that, their family love it. They love their rugby league. You you boys can't be good at every sport, can you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll tell you one who would who from the Titans it would be relevant if he could just get that spot. I really like Aaron Clark at lock. I think he's a great player. Like he just he just runs that ball hard and makes a ton of tackles. Like if he just hold, could hold down that lock spot, he would if he was a decent price, he would definitely be an option. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, right. and yes. he has he has been a, a super coach option at times as well, but He's um just never never had the minutes, and then when he does get bigger minutes, he he loses the PPM. So he's um he certainly put on a few kilos and bulked up a bit over the last couple of seasons. So I I think he could he could play just about anywhere in that forward pack. Yep. Last game's the Raiders versus the Eels for the Raiders. Atta Mariota starts on the edge with Zach Hoskins out with a concussion. Simi Sagi Simi Sagi Sagi <laughs> far out. Wouldn't want to take, say that a hundred times fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good try. Right. He'll come onto the bench for the Eels. Uh, Morgan Harper's been dropped. Uh, Bailey Simonson comes in, and Waimu Greg replaces Brennan Hands on the bench, which is kind of good for Lossy Corners. Um, I don't know if there's much to talk about this game, really, is there? Super coach relevant. I don't think there's much there, boys. Except for, yeah. oh, sorry, Blaze Talangi, obviously. 204K, played two games, negative break even at minus 55. I think if you've got anyone like Tua Picky or Salmon or Burbo, just go down to him, bring him in. He'll bank you about 150K too by doing those trades. Yeah. What, what's he, sorry, what's he priced at currently, Roscoe? Well, he's rock bottom, 204. He's only played two games. Yeah, I was wondering why lots of people were bringing him in in 5.8. And uh, yeah, like Can't I can't bring I was... him in at 5.8. He's only available center wing. Oh, because oh, he, he's playing in the halves, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. he's obviously one that then, if he if he does stay there, he'll um he'll pick up a jewel. But and if, there's a few guys that are that are that center wing um, five eight or or half. So it, that'll be interesting. But yeah, look, I don't know. Is it is it still the right time to keep going cash grab, or is it time to to be looking at the points? I think it's still. I think there's still plenty of time to cash generation. The only thing I will say, though, is if Parramatta lose this game and he doesn't have a decent game, like there's a chance that they could bring JJ and RC in too. So it's definitely a risk, but at least he's going to make you some cash anyway. See, yeah. I, like I've got Jacob – sorry, Sam. I've got Jacob Gagai sitting there. I really thought he was going to get a run this week. So yeah. I'm not sure if he's injured or what. I know he played really well in New South Wales Cup a couple of weeks ago. Um, but it, it's hard for me to justify uh, – sideways trade for the sake of a low BE and not knowing where the guy's going to end up. So it's, um yeah, I don't know. It's a, that's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. I think gay guy is in the 19 man squad or sorry, 22 man squad is, is named at number 22. So he mustn't be injured, but. Um, They're just not picking him. Yeah. But uh, I think the, the only other one with, with that game is just, you know, we wait and see how long Corey Horsburgh keeps, Coming off the interchange fence, mm. does he does he take minutes off Smithies or does he play front row? Um, and you know Zach, Zach Hoskins was a was a bit of a roller coaster over the last couple of weeks, wasn't he? You thought thought he was going to be on the bench for the rest of the season, then he was back starting on the field, and then and now he's concussion and out for the game. So plenty of ups and downs for owners with Jack uh, Zach Hosking. Yep, and it'll be really interesting after this round if all the troops are back. Like where does he? Where's he really going to fit and, and what's his role really going to be? Yeah. I, I think, I know Ricky did come out and say that he was going to leave Smithies at lock, but it's just a matter of what sort of minutes he gets. 
Mm. I don't think he's definitely not a season hold. I think we will have to sell him at some stage because it's going to get to the point where he's just going to plug out 30, 40 points and won't make us cash. So he's definitely not a keeper. And and that's the problem. He hasn't made any money. Yeah. So like even at, at the moment this week, I'd like to do some upgrades in my second row and having a couple of blokes would be 450 to 500 that you could add a hundred K and move up to, to some quality would be a much better option, but he just hasn't made the money yet. Yeah. All right. We'll quickly zip through these trade in and trade outs. There's just a few I want to talk to. I think the trade outs too will pick. He makes sense from the Warriors. He's not named. He's got to go. Taylor May boys. Um, we did speak about him a bit. Uh, do you think he's a, he's a must sell? Like I don't think he's a must, but surely he's going to get some ball. I know the Panthers have attacked the right to Targo last couple of games. Obviously, the game against was it the Broncos when they lost um, Walsh, and then they had uh, I think it was Ricky and Pia Kura on, on the edge on the centers. So obviously they attacked that, and then I think there was another game I think against the Bulldogs where they lost one of their edge their um, backs as well. Has he scored a try yet? Because I, I, I know. He was the only he, one. I don't think he has. He was about the only one in the back line that didn't score a try against the Broncos. Yeah, no. Because um, so. the the two centers and the the other wing had got points. So, yeah, I don't know. It's tough. He's certainly not a must sell. Um, I think he'll come good. I think he can get back to being that five fifty k sort of guy. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just a luck thing, really, isn't it? All right, next one, Luke, next one Luke Smith, is Luke Metcalf. I think that's no-brainer. He's gone for three months. Next one's Burbo. Um, I I like that trade out. He's not scoring well, not getting the minutes. Trade him trade him to um to Talangi from Parramatta, I reckon. Um, next one's Pia Kura. Right, I'm just, I, I've got a question on that. I've got Burbo and, and Salmon. Which one do I sell first? I've got them both, but they're both up in my second row at the moment. Well, that's that, and that's exactly where I've got them, and and this is the conundrum. Um, I think I think two. Burbo, I think Burbo's got more upside, but they've got similar BEs because I did have a look at it today. I think they've got like they both should get their BEs, but I don't know. Like Salmon might Salmon might get better minutes this week with with Curran playing on an edge. There's a good chance that Salmon could get extra minutes, but you still got Kurt Mann on that bench too. It's hard. So it's it so Burbo's three ten and Salmon's three thirty two. Uh BE's uh did it, did, did, did. there's not much difference. Bur Burbo's thirty seven and salmon's twenty eight. Mm. So salmon's most more likely to go up a few more bucks. Um but yeah, I don't know. It's it's twenty K. Sam, minutes. who goes first? Oh, geez, it's a tough one. Yeah, I think I think the way that Trebojevic plays, he's more likely to score a try and then somehow get a couple of rounds of more price rises for you. But neither of them are drastic must sells. I probably have to get rid of Tupanua. He's probably going to lose more cash than they will. Yep. Um, in the short term, so he's he's another trade out target. Uh, yeah, which makes it tough to get rid of with those two. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Brent, Brendan Piacura's next one. Um, I think he, we need to get rid of him. He's still out for another two weeks. Um, Zach Hoskins is next on the list, obviously not playing this week. And then we've got Salmon is the next one. Again, if you're going to uh, Talangi I, from the Eels, I'll, I don't mind that trade. Next one, I, I'm interested in um, Sam. Zach Labor. I am not selling him with this matchup this week. There's no way in the world. No way. That's probably the only thing saving him in my eyes, I guess. He's not in my team. Um, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't had him all year. I wish I did after the first round, but now I'm very happy that I, I haven't. Um, and, and yeah, I, I don't, you know, if you've got him, you probably keep him this week. You probably have to, but, uh, but yeah, I, I don't see him as a keeper for the, for the whole season. Number nine is Nathan Cleary. Um, again, yeah, it makes sense. And the last number 10 is Joey Lasik as well. So I think they, I think we probably are pretty much agreed. Most of them will just quickly zip through the trade in. So Blaise Salung is number one. Kai Pierce Paul, we've spoken about him. Number two, Olam's an interesting one, boys, at number three. Mm. He, yeah, he's he's looked really stuff. good. He's mm. looked hungry. He scored two tries in both his first two games. So, I mean, obviously you'd, you'd think Law of Averages says they'll dry up, but he's, he's looked pretty good. Yeah, he's not really a known worker, is he? He's obviously been motivated to start well for the Tigers, but but yeah, I can't see him scoring a try every week. Yeah, I um I talked someone out of that trade in last week, but 
anyway, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> number four is Hammer. We've spoken about him. I think we all agree that he's still a decent trade in. Um, number five, um, Jackson Ford boys. He's he's potting along nicely. He punched punched out a hundred on the weekend. He's looking really good on that edge. What's he? What's his other scores though? He's not one that I've looked at. He's one that I had for a lot of last season, but he's not one I've looked at this year. Uh, he's got a 57, 66, 69, 104. Yeah, fair enough. So, what's he? What's he priced at currently? And six forty. I don't know about his B, but he's six forty. Hmm. Hmm. One to keep an eye on. Yep, Jack Bostock's number next one on the list. Um, yeah. Jeez, I, I'm, I was so tempted to trade him in this week, but I, I just can't. I can't do it. He's going to make plenty of cash still, though, and I like the matchup as well. Yeah, if you've got, if you don't have Talonga, you have to get him instead, don't you? Just with the with the price they both are. Number seven's interesting, boys. Ryan Pappenhausen. No way. Oh, as in a sorry trade in. Yes, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Not, I'm, not trade out, Tim. Come yeah, on. Yeah, I was going to say you have me for a second then. I, I'm um. I'm looking at him on my screen at the moment. No, I've got him. I um, I'm stoked. I was a little bit frustrated. Uh, I didn't realize his his buy was as early as it was when I traded him in. Um, no, sorry, I started with my traded in Teddy a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, look, he's uh, I'm I can't fault anyone that's bringing him in. He's six fifty k or something similar. Uh, he's be he's up to um, six. He's up to nearly seven hundred. He's nearly seven hundred k now. Yeah. Be of negative six, so he's going to keep going up. He looked involved um, in their game, so yeah. Look, I, I really like it. I'm I'm hoping hoping that he's then either keeps performing that well and misses Origin, or uh, just goes through the roof and then is a trade down option. Um, take some money and trade down to somebody one of the other fallen guns. I was just having a look because I was interested to see who everyone's trading out to get him in and. I don't mind a lot of them. So there's Pia Kura, Hoskins, Halen May, Tua Picky, and Burbo. They're the top five that are going to mm. players that are going to Pappy. So I don't mind that. As long as you're not going one of the gun fullbacks to him, I, I, I really like that. I don't know if I'd be going Mulatalo to him, though. I'm not sure about that. No, I wouldn't do that. But he, he scares me a little bit. Um, I, I own him, but uh, he scares me as a player. I feel like he can have some pretty low scores. Uh, one of those fullbacks that if he doesn't get quite as involved, if the Storm don't have as much ball, if they don't score as many points, and he he really struggles. But Broncos historically have been a good matchup for the Storm. The Broncos have been killing it recently, but the Storm always seem to um, dominate them each year. So uh, might happen again this season. I would be but all over. I, I, stat- think be, I think I'd be all over him if he had that goal kicking. Honestly, I just think it's so much more upside having that. I heard a stat last night that Corey Oates is the only surviving Broncos member of a team that beat Melbourne in Melbourne. So, um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's certainly been a while between drinks for the Broncos. Well, there you go. I think number eight on the list, Thomas Flegler, we've already spoken about him, or John Johnson's number nine, and your man, Sam, Tom Dearden is at number 10. What's what's Johnson priced at at the moment? 662. He has a break even a seventy four. He has and dropped a bit. He has he did start the season. He has dropped one hundred and thirty k since the start of the season. Is so he, it's not a bad price. Is he halfback only? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, but that's that's uh, the best part of a hundred k cheaper than than shoes from the storm. So yeah. that's an interesting one. I'm going to look into that more. Yeah. All right, well, that's it. I think that's everything. Um, we've been through all that. So, um, yeah. Uh, anything else that we want to talk about, boys, Well, before we wrap up? Timmy? No, that's about it for me, mate. Trades this week is going to be really strategic. It's um, I can understand why people are bringing in the the cheapies that are still coming through. Blaze Talang is an interesting one. Is he going to keep his spot when they're at full strength? I'm, I'm not really sure. Obviously, Moses has gone for some time. But is he the guy they're going to leave in the halves or is he just the guy that's there for the moment? So, yeah, I, I'm not necessarily really sold on that. Um, he'll obviously be handy if he does pick up a dual position. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. We do, have a couple of, we do have a couple of questions here. Yeah, good. The first one is, 
if you've got your fight, if you've got Galvin and Metcalf in your five eights, who do we think is the best option for Metcalf in five eights position? Uh, de depends if they want to go up to Brown. Like I know Brown hasn't set the world on fire, but at least he's consistent. Um, and there's upside there if once they sort of iron out the kinks with Moses not being in the team, um, as opposed to next. As opposed to next cab off the rank, I don't know. Maybe maybe Munster go go a punt with Munster straight up. Yeah, that'd be a oh, play, shit. wouldn't it? <laughs> that'd be real ballsy, but I mean, I'm I'm happy with did and I mean, if you had those, I'd be going too. Well, I'd yeah, and, to and especially this week. Mm. Next question now. The question is from our mate Bergs from the uh, Super Coach uh, three sixty Super Coach three sixty. Good day, Bergs. Daddy Bergs. He says, do the Tigers have the potential to have multiple players from their squad in your super coach side, like Panthers and Chooks in years gone by? Some have had six to seven players in their in those one sides in the in the past. Thoughts? I well, strangely enough, yeah, the facts don't lie. Galvin's been pretty handy. I think Buller, although he's not top shelf fullback option, I think he could do worse than going him at the moment. He certainly got plenty involved last weekend. I'm not sure what his final score was, but he was uh, he's certainly in the mix. Um, obviously, they've got a fairly strong forward pack. You could look at Fainu. You could look at um, – there was guys trading in pole A last week. Um, Bateman's there or thereabouts. Happy, he's he's not quite well. – yeah, it's big Stefano. IPAP as well, another one. IPAP. So, yeah, yeah. Look, you, you could just about have most of their forward pack in your super coach team. They seem to score well on their day. Yeah. Um, I mean, even look at Justin Allen, like we talked about him yeah. before. He, he's scored four tries in two games. So, yeah. What do you reckon, Sam? Yeah, look, I, I think so. I think maybe for a different reason. You know, you've got a few guys like Galvin and Finu and um, and the, his brother, the other Finu. You know, they're, they're guys you might be getting in your team this year for their, their cash generation because they're cheap, not because they're necessarily the guns of the super coach world, but... But yeah, you can mix those with guys like Happy and and a few of the ones we mentioned. So I couldn't do it to myself. Probably I'm I'm not convinced after three rounds, four rounds of the year that um, Tigers are going to be well beaters this season. But but uh, I hope they do. I hope they uh, they have a good season because they they deserve it. They they do. Yeah. Well, that's all for tonight. Um, Timmy, thanks as always for coming on. Thanks very much, yeah. boys. Sorry, been been a little bit dodgy at times tonight. The legs playing up. So um. Yeah, trying to stretch Thanks. it out as I can while I'm on air. And Sam, thanks again for coming on as always. We appreciate it. Um, good luck for the rest of the season and go the Broncos. I shouldn't say that, but anyway. Yeah, you can. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Sam will be back. Sam, you you might you might be me for the next two weeks, mate. We'll uh, we'll talk more off air. No, we yeah no, we've got one covered for Sunday, but um yeah. Uh, that's it for this week. Um, good luck, everyone, for the round. And we will see you back Sunday night for our regular round wrap. Until then, have a good week, everyone, and good luck. See you later. Stay safe. Be good.